We know that we trust God. It's just that our faith, I mean, our soul being or our flesh has other agendas. It, he, our flesh, mind, will, and emotion has other things. And those other things will throw you off course. God still love you, but your relationship is not the best. How can God keep working with you if you can't obey him? How can God keep working with you if you can't pray? How can God keep working with you if you forget to pray? Because you're having too much fun. God don't want us by ourselves. God wants us to know who the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are. Found in Romans 18, 13. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. In today's sermon, from the Church of the Living God, Temple 208, we have our very own assistant pastor, Billy Dowdy, who loves to bring you the Word of God in a teaching mode. So get your pen and paper and sit back and enjoy. But first, first things first, again, I give all glory and honor to God. Thank him for his son, Jesus Christ. And now we know we, I call it the old world now, uh, last three years, a lot of things change. But at this moment, I ask that God will work through me and that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in God's sight, who is my strength and my redeemer. Pray with me. God said we should always pray. And so let us start connecting in prayer. Come on. Always Come on. in prayer, in our house, yes. Come on. in the church, Come on. at the job, Come on. Come on. at the store, Come on. at the car place. Come on. Let us pray. Yes. So I'm calling out a national prayer right now. You know we're in uh, National Prayer Day is coming. Yes. Yes. And what we want to pray about yes. is we want to pray about this country. There's a lot of things going on in this country we want to pray about. And so we're asking that God will lead the leaders by the power of the Holy Spirit. Are you with me on that? Yeah. We ask that God will lead the state officials by the power of the Holy Spirit. I know that there's one in there because Gwen Joseph was up there giving out food, remember? He didn't volunteer, he came out of the cave. And he knew what God told him to do. So we're praying for officials. We're praying for, for our state officials. We're praying for our local officials. We're praying for our community. Of course, we're praying for God's house. And specifically, I want to mention Coach Kennedy, who thought it was good to pray after coaching our, our game. Yeah, yes. But I want you to know that the yes. devil is on our backs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't become to steal, kill, and destroy, and he has not stopped. Yeah. And if you stop in the word of God, if you stop, then he's killing you. He's tearing you up. He's weighing you out. You can't even find a way out. I'm talking to the whole world. Yes. Talking to the members also. I thank God for this church. Yes. 8, 19, 1888, come on, come Wrightsville, Arkansas, come on. man of God led by God to get this word out. Went to Wrightsville, Arkansas with no members. And now the church of the living God is still standing. You better wake Amen. up. Amen. You better know where you are. Yes, you better know who you are. Yes. You better know whose you are. Yes. So I come to just comfort you. I didn't come to beat you around. Amen. May God restrict me from that. Because that is not my desire. Yes. God told Isaiah after they had been in bondage and they sinned and failed. But he told them now 
Isaiah, I want you to get out there and comfort them and comfort the people. And we need comforting today after going through the old world, I call it. And so we're praying for the coach who thought he would go pray. And the AFL, remember what's against us, principalities, rulers, dark places that's there. They don't even know that they're working for the enemy. They think they're doing something good. But this coach was praying. And they came and told him he can't pray. A private prayer. In the corner. By himself. You think we don't have to pray? You better pray. We praying. So we praying for the coach to get victory in all that he do. We're praying that God continue to use us as lights. And so now at this moment, pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you go before us all the days of our life and that we accomplish those things that you have in us and that you brought us here for. And now I pray our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. I just want to encourage you today. I always want to remind you in 2022, we walk in how we supposed to walk. We walk in the spirit, always walk in the spirit. I shared with you my whole life ministry of how to walk in the spirit. So at this moment, I'll just remind you of walking in the spirit. There's five daily principles that you must operate off of all the time, which will keep you in the spirit of God. First of all, you must believe that God's, uh, that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. You believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah? You bring him into your heart. And at this time now, just in case, don't want nobody to be outside of what I'm saying at this moment. So at this time, if you shall confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And so at this moment, you're taken care of. God's going to take care of you. He's going to grow you. He's going to encourage you. He's going to share you. He's going to develop you. He's going to produce you. You don't even know. But if you've done that, you're going to have a hard and heavy testimony because God is calling us in this world now. He's called this generation. You can see in the Bible, sometimes you, you read the Bible and it says that, uh, that it, it makes it seem like as if God is coming. Well, he is coming in that generation because when you die out, you missed it. So God is now. We know Jesus is returning, but he's now. The blueprint is now. The things that Jesus said that greater works we would do is now. In this generation and the next generation and the next generation until God come home. Until Jesus come, not so much as home, but until Jesus returns to restore this earth. And what does he put us? I told you in the last message, I said that, G- that God will put us, will gather us as sheep and protect us while he destroyed this earth with fire. Man. Oh, yeah, that's in the Bible. It ain't me being mad and me being upset. So you need to be on the right side. So make that confession now. Walking in the spirit, I told you there's five daily things that you should keep on your head and on your mind. First is what your belief is. Second is uh, what you see. What you, what you see, you got to know that God exists. How many know God exists right now? Can you show me your hands right now? You know that God exists. That's the principle you walk in, right? And then after you see God or knowing God, but first you what? You heard something. Ding, 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 ding. I heard something. Then I believed something. Uh Uh-oh, you think you're almost there? Not there yet. Because now I got to obey. 
And now when I obey, yeah. I'm getting close. Because now that I'm obeying, guess what? I'm walking in the spirit. Guess what? The word of God is the Holy Spirit is talking to you and I. And it's up to you to do what God says. But you got to you got to crucify the flesh to get clarity. You got to cru crucify. Now, after that, you sitting around, you know that God, you know you, what you believe, you know what the Bible says, you, you know what you heard, you know what you see, and you know, if you don't know if you obeying God, shame on you. But remember, we look at us sometimes and say, well, maybe he's a little bit more better than me. No, all have fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned. I've sinned. But glory be to God, Gloria. Hallelujah. I know something that happened. Let me stay in my message. I get, I'm getting excited. Let me stay in my message. Then after that, after you got the obedience and all of that, right? That's all good, right? But then you got to do something. You got to do something. You know, you just can't sit around and say, I know God is good. <laughs> God is great. <laughs> Beautiful thing. <laughs> but what is he telling you to do? Sit there? Well, sit there and glorify him. That's what he's telling you. I'm, I, I, because remember, I told you I was going to stay in a state of goodness. That's the fruit of the spirit. Walking in the spirit. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering and goodness. Against such there is no law. There's nobody that can take the goodness that God wants to give me. Nobody can take it, Gwen. It's yours. It's yours, Artie. We're praying for the family. We're praying for the lost. But we know the glory of the story, too. We know, we know when I finish, we know, we know that God's got it. Amen. Next thing I want to remind you of real quick is the relationship. Relationships are so important, aren't they? Yeah. 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 So how do you protect your relationship? I give you that. I tell you that. I tell you the things that you do. If you know that and follow that, your relationship with God will be good and you will produce what God brought you here for. What is it? Amen. Is that you must love God, right? Yeah. After you look, I call it the Abrahamic good faith covenant. Yeah. That's what I call it. So I can remember. You don't, have, yeah. you don't have to remember that. You know what they tell you. You don't have to remember that part. But you have to remember these. You have to remember what's in a good relationship. And a good relationship is love. So you love God with all your heart, right? And if you love God, he loves you back. And so now what happens? There's faith. So I have to have faith in God. When I have faith in God, my relationship is good. But then, again, the key thing that threw us in sin. What is it? Somebody tell me. Thank you, Gloria. Obedience. Don't you know when God tells you or speak to you or you've seen it or someone told you or you heard it at church of the living God, Temple 208, you heard it at your job. Don't you know what happens there? You obey. Come on. That's a good relationship. Come on. What brought us to sin was disobedience. Come on. So to keep your good relationship, you must remember those principles. Amen. Love obedience and I told you faith and then I, I added a fourth one tr uh, trust if you stay in those things you don't have a good relationship because God loves you if you believe it God loves you he's telling you these things and now what are you going to do I don't trust you Lord we know that we trust God it's just that our faith I mean our soul being or our flesh has other agendas it, he, our flesh, mind, will, and emotion has other things. And those other things will throw you off course. Right? And now your relationship, God still loves you. But your relationship is not the best. How can God keep working with you if you can't obey him? How can God keep working with you if you can't pray? How can God keep working with you if you forget to pray? Because you're having too much fun. I, I had the image of Snoopy in my head. <laughs> and I like Snoopy. That's my guy. When I, when I see Snoopy, he's on the top of the house. And he <laughs> Good relationship. 
Abrahamic good relationship, covenant, love, faith, obedience, and trust. Now, make that the anchor of your soul. Make Christ the anchor. He paid the price. I come to the guarantee is in, uh, in, what a, in, in uh, 1 Peter chapter 1. All of that chapter is really where I'm at. Yes. And, I, and I can't do a whole chapter. So your homework is meditate on Peter this week. Okay. How about that? Okay. Okay. First Peter. Okay. That's what God told me to say to you. Okay. Do an obedient thing. Okay. Okay. God makes my job easy. All I have to do is read the scriptures, Dave. And do become a follower myself. Yeah. Uh -huh. At least Paul said I become a castaway. Yeah. I saved someone, but yet I'm going to hell. That's going to happen, though. Yeah, that's real going to happen in the world. Somebody going to do something, but they didn't, they didn't do that confession. They didn't bring it in. Come on. Cast away. Don't want to do that. Come on. We know Jesus makes things so plain in the Bible, doesn't he? He said, if you wonder, you forget, you think, well, what did Jesus really do? What did he come to do? What did Jesus come to do? Thank you. He, he said that the son of man is come to save that which is lost. Oh, yes. now, now, now that's what he came to do. Yeah. But then he told them, I'm going away. Yeah. But when I go away, I'm going to send you a comforter, comforter. And he's going to lead and guide you in all truth. So don't run around here as, a member, as, as believers. On the believers. Don't run around here like you don't know. You just ain't paying attention. When we sat in class, Gwen, we weren't always paying attention, Bishop. And I didn't do so good on the test. Tell the truth. And I knew that I could study a little bit more. I knew I should spend my time over here a little bit more. So Jesus made that plain. Here's what we carry. Heaven is in God's kingdom. Last time I spoke to you, I said God is reigning all the time. Well, what I'm talking to you about today is God is guiding. God is always guiding. Always. Can't be confused. He, he, he guided us in the pandemic. Amen. God was still there. Amen. He didn't lock up heaven from us. Amen. He stayed in. And he watched the mess that we can make and couldn't get out of. And if you didn't call on God the last two years, I'm telling you to call on God. Let him in. Otherwise, you'll sin. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, man. I want you to keep a few thoughts in your mind today. Amen. I want you to keep this. The hearing principle that I told you, that I just told you, right? Hearing is part of the five principles I tell you. Here's what the word of God says about that. When the righteous cry for help, Psalms 34 and 17, the Lord hears and delivers them out of their troubles. That's the trust. I call you, Lord. I believe you, Lord. Yeah. I trust you, Lord. Man. And before it's before long, Detroit, before long, you're praising God. You know why you're praising him? Because he's getting you out of hell. Yeah. He, I mean, he's he helping. You. And so the word says, when the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of their troubles. Do you believe that? That's all we got to do. I told you I'm here to encourage you. I don't care what you're going through or thinking about. I get it. I get it. This world can lay you out. You can think for the rest. You can stay in a hole till you die. If you let a problem or something overtake you and you X God out and Jesus don't count. You by yourself. And I'm not saying that you're not saved. 
but you by yourself. God don't want us by ourselves. God wants us to know who the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are. Yeah, that's what God wants. Trust in God that he will help you and you will and will not leave you alone to face your the trials. Those fiery trials that we read in uh, first Peter that he will come his and have his provision in that day. Now here's here's the knowledge and the growth and the renewed mind part. Yeah. Found in Romans 18 13. For if you live after the flesh you shall die. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Amen. Control. What is that again? Mortifying the deeds of the body. What is that? That's found in Galatians chapter six, chapter five, right in there. Self-control, temperance, temperance. If you have temperance, whoo, God can get in and show you some work. God can get in and show you a blessing. God can get in. But if you don't have that self-control, and here's the thing, the toughest one I haven't hit yet coming this year is, is the member that'll kill you. What is that member that'll kill you? Thank you. I know I got to teach on it now. The tongue. But here's, what, but here's what God showed me about the tongue. And the brothers and I talk about it all the time. Before you speak. Huh. 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 Yeah, you don't, don't play with me on that. Don't fool me on that. Oh, I didn't know. I lost control. I've been married over 38 years. <laughs> yeah. Took me a while, but I got it. And what do I do, Derek? Lord. Woo. And God said, it's you. <laughs> uh, you got to love God, man. You got to love him. I'm telling you. Yeah. So the flesh will mess you up. That's all I came to tell you. Romans, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the transformation of the mind, be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable will of God. I'm telling you today that God guides. Amen. The theme is keep growing and sharing this good news of Jesus Christ. The thought I want you to walk away with is for the time has come yeah. that the judgment must begin at the house of God. And if first begin at us, we shall what, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel? Hmm? You think uh, I want to miss getting in this heavenly state because I didn't obey this word that I understood? The problem is operating in emptiness, an unregulated mind, not fully persuaded. First Peter, but let none of you suffer as a murderer, as a thief, as a evildoer, as a busy body in other matters. Suffer, he said suffer. And we ain't always thinking about a physical murder there. But we're thinking about assassination of a character of a, of a believer. Trying to talk about. Well, thank God at the Church of Living God those days we don't see. Thank God for the obedience of Bishop Dowdy in this house when we shut down for a brief period. We thank God for all those things. Amen. Give you my solution. Getting close now. Give you my solution. The solution is you already know. You don't have to work hard on my solution. Prayer, the solution, God will guide you. John the eyewitness said this, and even Peter, these are eyewitnesses. These are account of eyewitnesses. This ain't what I think. This is what I seen, heard, and know. John's eyewitness. And John says this about prayer. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. That's what yeah. you pray for. Yeah. That's your solution. Yeah. That's what you pray for. See, when you pray for that, yeah. and that happens, what you going to do? You're going to thank God. Yeah. Next in the solution is four things. The Holy Spirit. 
How about when he, the spirit of truth, come, he will guide you in all truth. So you got to ask God. You got to go to God. I'm just reminding you and encouraging you. That's all. Jesus told his disciples this in the, in the seeing part. He said, he shall, the Holy Spirit, he shall glorify me, for he shall receive a mind and shall show it unto you. Amen. Aren't you happy God is showing you things? Amen. Aren't you happy God is directing you? Yeah. Aren't you happy that God is guiding you? Yeah. Even when you're going through the fiery trial that Peter said in the introduction in the reading. Yeah. That's when you look for God. That's when you're doing that, that heavy bench press. Yeah. That's when you're running that marathon. You know, you building up. Why? When you got to run a marathon, you ready. We got to run a marathon. And God blesses us. Yeah. Holy Spirit. Third thing, you better keep close with you. You better know it. Per First Peter 1 and 23. Part of your homework for next week. You'll run across this again. Being born again. Not of a corruptible seed, but an incorruptible seed by the word of God, which liveth forever. The truth comes with Jesus said, I'm the true vine and my father is the husband man. John 14 and 6 said, Jesus said, I, I said unto you, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto me, but the father. Conclusion says this. You are always safe in the kingdom of God. Amen. Paul said this. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril of the sword? For it's written, for, the, for thy sakes we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that love us. Woo! You better have a persuaded mind. Paul said this, for I am persuaded that neither death, I told you nothing can separate you. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor, present, nor things present or nor things to come, nor heights, nor depths, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us, talking to the believers, from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. As every man has received the gift, Peter says, so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Yeah. Seeing this background of the scripture, seeing you have purified your soul in obeying the truth through the spirit unto an unfringed love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart and fervently being born again, not of a corruptible seed, but an incorruptible, uh, incorruptible seed by the word of God, which abideth and liveth and abideth forever. But right here, connecting my last message with this message and closing you out. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. And I told you last time, Peter 2 and 9 but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him that have called you out of the darkness into the marvelous light. God bless you. Go forth and be everything that God called you to be. He put it in you. Nothing can separate you. All you have to do is follow those principles and hear what God is telling you today. What you need to do. God bless you. And again, I thank you. Again, share this word. God will bless you. Thanks for watching. Be blessed by sharing this message. 
Support our ministry by following us on all social media platforms like YouTube. Hit the subscribe and like buttons, Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Your generous giving allows the church to grow, which supports our efforts in providing the needed services for the community. There are a variety of ways for you to continue your giving. Go to the links in the description below, and God bless.